We now move into item eight, presentation from the Eden Park Trust Board. So I would ask John Bishop to introduce the item first, and then we will be joined by members of the team. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, good morning, councillors. I love the purpose of this report uh, is to give effect to one of the 2019 resolutions of this committee and invite the Eden Park Trust Board to report to this committee um, on a, at least a six monthly basis to outline its performance. Uh, so on that note, I will hand over to representatives of the Eden Park Trust Board, uh, being Doug Mackay, its chairman, Vicky Salmon, one of its trustees, Nick Sortner, the CEO, and Brett Wood Stanley, its uh, CFO. I'm happy to come back afterwards and answer any questions you may have. Doug, Nick, Vicky. Brett. Morena. Morena. Microphone, please, Doug. Thanks. Yep. Good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to present today. Mm -hmm. um, could I just clarify, Vicky Salmon uh, comes to join and support us as um, a trustee, but also as chair of the Finance Committee. So clearly things financial are on everybody's mind at the moment, so um, she is joining us to uh, answer any of those type of questions. Right. Um, since we came and got your support for a, a funding package for the park, we have been extremely busy um, implementing um, some of the initiatives we talked about, um, which are in train now, uh, running a very busy event schedule up until the end of last week. Um, but now, clearly, things have changed. But we're not able to talk in too much detail about how things have changed because we haven't actually had a board meeting yet. The team in the business are working on the financial implications of what might change. So you can ask us any questions you like, of course, but we will not be able to respond in a lot of detail about what's changed in the last four days just at this point. We've got our first meeting um, of the Finance Committee next Tuesday where we'll review updated situation. But um, we've got a presentation deck, which I'm going to ask Nick just to refer to two pages because I think it is of most interest to members of the committee and the council. Um, and I'll ask him to do that in a sec. Once he's finished there, it's my suggestion we then move through the um, issues in the resolutions. Um, we talk about the funding, we talk about the loan agreement status, we talk about governance and we talk about the partnering proposal and we can update you on all four of those things. And then that would be us, um, and we'd be happy to sit here and take any questions that you might have. I might just apologise for Brett Wynne Stanley and ask anybody not to panic. Brett has a long-term 20-year dry cough uh, condition, and uh, we're used to it at the uh, Eden Park Trust Board, um, but he might break out into a coughing fit. I want to assure you that he uh, is under control and it is not something you might not want him to have. Okay, um, Nick, could I ask you uh, in a minute just to go to the two pages that I think would be of most interest to the councillors? I want to contextualise that because the challenge, um, frankly, I was given by the previous mayor and in my time at the council, and the challenge I was given by His, Your Excellency Phil Goff, um, Excellency, sorry, Your Worship, Your Worship. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> You'll deserve it after the next three or four months, Mr. <laughs> Mayor. Um, uh, and by many of you around the table, um, was to make any progress at Eden Park, you need to embrace and get closer to your community. And I want to assure you, we have spent many waking hours thinking about and doing just that. So I'd like Nick particularly just to quickly update the type of initiatives. We've never felt more closer to our Eden Park community than we are today. So this is our neighbourhood and the people who live around us, the businesses that operate close to us and rely on us, the schools and the other infrastructure around community. So Nick, would you like to talk to those and then we'll get into more of the business meeting. Maureen, thanks for your time this morning. 
Um, I don't have a clicker, so uh, I'll just ask you to move forward through. Keep going, please. Keep going, please. Keep going, please. So thank you for your time. Um, as Doug mentioned, over the last uh, two years, we've really had a focus on uh, ensuring one of our key stakeholders being our community has been central to this decision making at the park. Uh, we've had over 200 activities involving the community and uh, we now have a neighbourhood supporters club of over 1,400 residents, uh, 350 businesses and in excess of 12 schools who are very supportive of what we are moving forward to. A number of the highlights over the last 12 months have seen, um, sadly, uh, the Auckland Remembrance Ceremony for the Christchurch uh, uh, tragedy. Um, we were also scheduled last weekend to have the 12 month anniversary and commemoration service. We hold uh, a number of community activities, whether it be uh, Eid, um, the City Mission Christmas Appeal, um, the Lifewise Big Sleep Out. Uh, we now have a refugee garden based at Eden Park that reinvests back into the community through selling fruit and vegetables, but also there are a number of school activities held at the park um, that provide children the opportunity uh, to utilise the Eden Park facilities. We are committed to our community and we continue to meet with them on a, in most instances, a monthly basis, but also communicate with them on a weekly basis to ensure that this is a strategic asset for New Zealand, but it's also a community asset for Auckland. Thank you. The second page, if I can flick to, please. Um, there's been a number of obviously highlights, uh, and keep going, please. And one more, please. Number of highlights in terms of our event calendars delivering uh, some of uh, obviously the biggest fixtures uh, in New Zealand over the last 12 months. We have got an exciting event calendar in 2021. Uh, we're delighted to be hosting the ICC Women's World Cup opening fixtures. Uh, we also will be hosting the Rugby World Cup 2021 and Tamatatini. We're in discussions with APEC to host uh, uh, elements of that event, along with a number of other key content uh, and key drivers for the venue. From a venue perspective, um, we do see the venue as a multi-purpose facility and uh, the event calendar in 2021 will uh, obviously make a significant contribution to Auckland and New Zealand and showcase us on a global stage. Thank you. That's all we wanted to talk to, Sandy. Thank you. All right, if we could move to the um, previous resolutions and uh, for us to update you on those. Um, if, I could talk, if I could talk to the loan resolution firstly, um, and just acknowledge John Bishop here because the team in your finance department have been just such a delight to work with. They've made it really easy for us to navigate what normally are very cumbersome and quite challenging processes at times. Um, but we got tremendous support from your team to establish and transfer the loans over from ASB. Um, it was seamless, so thank you very much for how quickly and easily that happened. So the loans are now in place, the securities are in place, um, and so on. And um, we're, our covenant reporting is uh, in place also, and we've sent, I think, two, is it two? Two covenant reports through um, uh, up until this time. So I won't comment any more on the, um, the loan, but uh, clearly, as we sit here today, it's been um, very reassuring to have that support. And will you know will help us navigate the next um, period of um, challenge. Uh, I'd ask Brett to talk about resolution B, which is the uh, funding. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, like Doug, I'd also like to acknowledge and thank Lee Redshaw and his team for uh, the manner in which the um, funding, the development funding um, agreement was. Um, put into place and once again they've been excellent to deal with um, through our process of claims so far. Uh, we have so far submitted um, and received payment for $670,000 of claims as outlined uh, in the report and the principal projects uh, that related to are first of all um, the first instalments uh, of cost of replacement of our turf. Uh, that project 
is underway as we speak. Um, the uh, team are beginning the, um, the bedding in process at our Karaka turf farm and ultimately um, in around about November, the fully grown turf will be harvested and transported uh, to Eden Park to be, um, to be installed. So $426,000 towards the cost of the turf project. We also spent $243,000 um, on a, a very important project to um, replace emergency lighting um, in the south and north stands, um, an important safety feature for the, for the park. Uh, for the facility overall. Thank you. Nick, would you like to talk to the um, operational partnering resolution? Thanks, Doug. Um, a number of meetings have been held uh, with Jim Doyle, um, with Stephen Town and also Chris Brooks. Um, we have put together 10 examples of efficiencies and also deliverables through that operational efficiencies. Um, however, uh, given the CCO review is uh, in train, uh, we've been advised for that process to pause until the outcomes of that review. And lastly, um, governance. Um, I've been engaged with the government uh, on their thinking around future governance. Um, I've talked to Stephen Town about the council thinking on governance and um, again with potential outcomes from the CCO review we've all decided it just might be better uh, to pause and uh, await any changes in the CCO review which then might lead us to um, changes in the governance um, for the park. So there's been a bit of thinking done. Um, at the moment, and given where we are today, I think stability and uh, people who know the operation of the park on the uh, trust board is really important. So I'm quite happy that we travel on in the current state. So that is the summary of our feedback to the committee. And happy to take any questions. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, I have a question from the Mayor. Oh. Firstly, thank you, Madam Chair, <clears throat> and firstly, can I just acknowledge you, the efforts that you're making to get better utilisation of the park, particularly as a community facility, and it's great to see it used. For example, Nick, we catch up every year at Christmas with the, the Auckland City Mission. Um, my question is notwithstanding the fact that your board hasn't uh, uh, met yet to consider the financial implications of COVID-19, but <clears throat> it's going to affect all of us, and I just wondered, um, Probably, you know, if you, even if you took it back a year, for you, you can't hold events of more than 500. I suspect that by early this afternoon, there'll be no more than 100. And effectively, you'll close down other than maybe matches that can be broadcast with no, no stadium audience. Um, what is the potential financial income uh, loss of, of revenue on a monthly basis? Just going back over the last couple of years and averaging it, what would you expect to be losing for as long as you're required not to use your, fa your facility for that purpose? I understand. Um, our financial year runs to the end of October, so we have run a set of um, forecasts at the revenue line only. Um, and we have $7 million of revenue at risk if you assume this situation goes through till the end of October. We were travelling... Between now and October. Between now and October, yes. Yes. Um, we've got a starting small positive cash position, and we have some unutilised facilities in the loan from the council. So um, we're just sitting there pondering all that at the moment. We will have a very intense meeting on Tuesday to um, get to the bottom of it. But effectively, it's an unprecedented situation for us and many other businesses, which I see in my other worlds, of course. Um, never seen a situation where there's zero revenue. It's not about managing your costs. It's just zero revenue. As a trust board, we've taken, we've stopped paying fees, um, and uh, you know we've decided that our fees. Um, could support two full-time employees. So um, we, we, we're trying to, but it's all at the edges, really, when you've got a $7 million hit to revenue. Oh, wow. Okay, Councillor Darby. Uh, 
Thanks, and uh, thanks, Doug, Nick, and others. Um, just on the outset, um, Mr. Bishop introduced this in response to the resolution, but we are one year after the resolution, which indicated a six, at least six monthly report. So I've not seen any email correspondence to go to all the members about why we are only getting this now. So can I have an explanation, and this is not for Eden Park to explain, it's for our organisation to explain why we are six months out on, on the resolution, our resolution. Can we just come back to that when Mr Bishop comes back into the room? There was an election in the middle of all this, I must admit, but um, we'll wait, we'll just wait. Hold that question. Do you have another one, Councillor? Yeah, just, just at the outset, um, that resolution required an invitation to be put uh, to Eden Park to attend on an at least six monthly basis to outline their financial um, and I think um, revenue projections, I can't remember the exact wording now. Um, so are we going to satisfy that resolution? Because I'm, I'm not- I'll come back to we, you. We haven't dealt yep. with the annual report, so the Correct. financials is the annual report. We haven't heard any real detail there. Um, and then the financial pro projections are, are, are not easy to address. Okay. Hold that. When Mr Bishop comes back, we'll answer your questions. All right? So just hold your questions and I'll get you an answer when he comes back. Well, the second part of the question is really to Eden Park Trust. Are we looking at the annual report, the financials mm -hmm. in detail? Because we haven't had anything presented to us uh, to, um, to satisfy the resolution. Okay, do you want to answer that? Chair, could we go? There is a slide in there of financials, which is our financial update till the end of January, I think it was. We could go there. This one. Okay. Councillor, we're just pulling back the presentation. Thank you. The annual report was distributed widely, so I only hope that it landed on every councillor's desk that wanted it. Okay. Chair, the, the resolution is to outline today is about the opportunity of Eden Park Trust to outline its performance and financial projections. Performance, that's annual report, and looking ahead. So I think what I'm hearing from the team is that they have sent out their annual report to all councillors. Um, I have to be reminded exactly when that was, but it has been received. December. And in December. And now they're talking about their financial projections as per the resolution looking forward. There is a financial slide in your pack. Um, can Sorry, that's, that's, that's not accurate. You've got to go to the resolution. And the resolution is they're here to address the um, okay. Nick, do you want to talk to the whole re yeah, presentation? We can talk to that. Yeah. Mm. We've found it. Chair, it's not reasonable. Look, I'm sorry to be a little bit ropey about this. If, if we're just relying on the annual report, why would we invite them here? You can't, re you can't just land a report and, be, have, and rely on that as being an explanation of the performance. Yep, I'll we'll just let the Eden Park respond. Okay. Um, the, uh, just with respect to the timing, um, the uh, funding loan uh, was, uh, began as of the 30th of September uh, last year, so we are less than six months from uh, the instigation of the funding loan. Um, the financial performance is summarised uh, on the screen there. Our FY 2019 actuals are our financial results for the 12 months to 31 October 2019. Uh, we achieved a profit, uh, an operating profit before interest of 3.794 million, um, interest costs of 1.3, and a profit 
before depreciation of 2.492 million. Um, after the book entry for depreciation, we uh, posted a total comprehensive loss for the year of 6.341 million. Uh, our performance in the financial year was um, more than a million dollars better than our um, budget for the year. Uh, that's at the profit before depreciation line. And looking forward to 2020, uh, once again, we have um, variations in our event calendar. We have a better top line revenue of $18 um, million expected uh, in, in the budget projections. Obviously, we're in a different, uh, different world today. Uh, we were anticipating an operating profit of $3.7 million, uh, which would yield uh, a profit before depreciation after interest costs of $2.5 million. Um, in terms of our cash flows, uh, in, in rough numbers, our profit before depreciation equates fairly closely to our excess cash uh, subject to our capital expenditure costs. Uh, and therefore, um, our total comprehensive loss budgeted for 2020 was uh, $6.3 million. So what you're saying is it took six months to do the, the work, so therefore you have met the, the guidelines as per the resolution. Is that correct? Well, well I believe that uh, the uh, intention was to present uh, within six months of the loan being established, and the establishment date was the 30th of September. So we've, that, that's the discussions we had internally with uh, council representatives. Thank you. Um, Councillor Walker. So I, I certainly take on board all of the things that you're doing in terms of the um, community, your engagement and, um, and the like. And, and I'm mindful that um, Eden Park, um, I would suggest, is, is well placed to respond to an event such as we have. What would interest me, and I don't need an answer right now, is how the council is able to assist Eden Park given that I would suggest it's a critical part of the event and uh, stadium delivery across uh, New Zealand. And as much and all as we can't second guess how things are going to develop, there will be a rebound if we can keep out and stamp out. New Zealand is very well placed. So I just invite a response as to how soon you may be able to come back to us. Uh, thank you for that question, Councillor. And um, I, I would have to say that um, the council has already done a lot. And if we didn't have your support last year, I would hate to think where we might be now. Um, as to what we might come and talk to you about in the future, I really don't know. I hope that we can um, manage within our own resources and with the existing facilities that we've already established with you. Um, and if we all believe, which I do, that this thing will last for six months, nine months maybe, the world will come back. It's not like the GFC. There was a broken part of the global financial um, system in the GFC and that needed um, triaging. Um, we don't have anything broken in the financial system across the world at this point in time. It's a health emergency that is having implications everywhere and a health emergency should be able to be resolved. So we really need events to come back to the park. Um, we need our supporters to stay with us in terms of the, um, the sponsorship partners, the people who buy memberships and uh, our corporate boxes and so on. Um, and at this point in time, um, I can't tell you what the outcome of that will be be much better placed mid next week to understand what those implications are. But thank you for the question and thank you for what you're doing already. Could I just add one further comment that um, Eden Park has contacted both government and council and made the facility available for any alternate purpose, should there be a need and should the uh, issues that the, <clears throat> the world and New Zealand is facing, um, we are available as a, a major piece of infrastructure for Auckland. And, and that is, um, I certainly received your um, annual report 
and I've since spoken to yourself and, and other people on um, Eden Park. Um, so I just seek that um, there isn't any issue, obviously, um, communicating with you and, and working alongside you. Thank you. Councillor Newman. Well, Chair, first, a quick question <clears throat> for you to confirm, and then I do have a question for the Trust Board. Um, I, I assume that we're not reasonably expecting the Eden Park Trust Board, I mean, they can report on their financial position um, from the period previously, but it wouldn't be reasonable to expect the Eden Park Trust Board uh, to be able to accurately forecast their financial position moving forward, given that we are at the start of the global pandemic, which is requiring a reforecasting of budgets for everyone. We can't even do that ourselves as council yet. We can't expect the CCOs to do that yet. And it wouldn't be reasonable to expect that the Eden Park Trust Board today would be able to forecast its financial position with any degree of accuracy into the future, other than to say that it will be a watching brief. Is that correct? Absolutely. OK. Well, given that uh, uh, if we weren't at the start of a, of a global pandemic, maybe we could talk about the future. But what I'd like to talk about today is um, where, the, uh, where the improvement in the operating income came from, because obviously uh, your position uh, is better than it was previously. So notwithstanding the fact that you had less events, where did that additional funding revenue come from? What have you been doing to drive that up? Thank you, Daniel. And uh, I referenced the Mayor's comments earlier that uh, we are looking to innovate and diversify our revenue streams by utilisation. Our function business um, has seen significant growth and utilisation of our assets along with our tourism um, initiatives where we see up until 10 days ago up to two tours a day and up to um, some weeks a thousand tourists a week visiting the park. Um, this year uh, we are projecting for two All Blacks fixtures and uh, the performance to date of the Blues along with five uh, cricket fixtures, one that obviously has been postponed, saw that growth in our revenues. Uh, what's your capacity uh, for uh, to, to be a to be a point of if in the event of an emergency response? What's your what, the facility itself is a is a large facility. Uh, you've um, uh, what's what's the ability to access all parts of it? Understanding that there's obviously a need to ensure that um, that people can be operating at safe distance. But uh, it, is, it is an important location, so have you done much planning around that, obviously, uh, beyond um, offering the facility? We've identified this is a time for the community to band together. Uh, we're working with our hirers and broadcasters on developing content that complies with the government regulations, but also sees utilisation of the park. Um, in the event that issues do escalate, uh, we are already a disaster recovery centre for Auckland and New Zealand. Uh, we do have the capability with our control rooms and um, various facilities throughout uh, to be able to accommodate uh, uh, emergency services um, and uh, various other requirements should they present. OK, and my one final question. Let's assume that, um, um, and hopefully, in the not too distant future, the immediate um, situation um, is resolved and we're now gearing back up into recovery. Uh, what's the readiness of the park to start to uh, take those um, events and also to the other smaller uh, community events and opportunities to and drive patronage so that we can, re as, as we enter the recovery phase? Um, certainly the message to our staff and our partners is we will find a way, uh, we will get through this together and we are confident that uh, people will want to go and experience sport and entertainment when we get through this situation. So we are planning uh, to a number of our functions have been postponed rather than cancelled. Um, a good example is the police with their graduation ceremonies. Yes, they've been postponed but they've committed once we can um, they will continue to be held at Eden Park. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Watson. 
Thank you, Madam Chair, and um, thank you, uh, Trust Board, for your um, um, proactive uh, offer of uh, Eden Park. That's uh, certainly much appreciated. Um, and um, I guess congratulations on your financials too that uh, really were highlighted there by Councillor Newman. And um, yes, you know, I did read that in January when you sent that report out, so thanks for that. Um, my question, however, kind of goes to tying all these things together, and that's, uh, you know, what Doug referred to, the, you know, the unprecedented situation we find ourselves and the world find itself. And, and, and that notion of how, uh, for our nation's, you know, uh, mental health, physical health, that that a degree of normality does does continue. Now, you you obviously have uh, contacts with big stadiums uh, around the world, uh, and I wonder if you could just give us a little um, indication as to how you know the, the sort of creativity that's been exhibited in the local events, the regional events the national and inter international events might be um, applied to, the, to a pandemic situation where uh, all the measures of uh, uh, social distancing perhaps could be dealt with, but, but we could still uh, host events or cater for community functions that would go to that continuation of a degree of normality, keep the park functioning, and, and of course, ensure that there's, there's no spread of uh, the virus. Thank you. Uh, in relation to uh, the utilisation of the park, we have made ourselves available to our key hirers. We do acknowledge that it is important that um, sport can continue, but we are very mindful of the government um, regulations and restrictions, and we would certainly be in a position to ensure that we comply with those. Um, there has been some discussions around uh, whether or not um, a limited number of people could continue to, to visit the park, um, but as we all know, that could change within a 24-hour period. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Cashmore. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for the presentation. My question... Um, is really, I guess, to you, Doug, and that is, you intimated there's a possibility of a $7 million loss because of COVID-19 between now and October. Is that the net figure or is that the gross? Because your, your income, the exponentially increased social expenses, I presume that what you quoted was the gross figure? That was the gross revenue figure. So what would the net loss potentially be with your expenditure dropping? Well, that's what we need to work, work through, through by Tuesday and understand what costs we can contain, what work we can <clears throat> stop doing yeah. and just pause for the moment. Uh, but on the other hand, if there's no activity at the park, we've got an unusual window where we could get some stuff done that is hard to schedule when you've got constant activity going on. So we've just got to balance all that up. We'd be interested in knowing what that number is at some point in time. Um, <coughs> my second question, if I may, Madam Chair, is purely about um, the horny old toad in your financial wardrobe, which is the depreciation, and your annual accounts showed the numbers pretty much static. Um, if you get this omnibus consent, are you going to be able to make some inroads into the back story of the depreciation funding? I, I don't see depreciation changing because um, it's all um, calculated in c conformance with the accounting standards. Um, but clearly, if we can find new sources of revenue as we come out of this situation, um, any increased indebtedness or any financial pressures we have incurred getting through it, We'll, we'll, we will be better placed to service and pay down. But the depreciation number I don't see changing as part of that. Frankly, I don't pay much attention to depreciation. I can be criticised for that if you like. But um, the number that really matters is the profit before depreciation, what I call um, you know, operating profit after interest. If we can satisfy our cash flow requirements week by week and we can turn a $2.5 million surplus um, on cash, then we've got some money to invest in improving the park and paying down our debt. Yeah, so creating that headroom by paying down debt creates that, it's the same thing as funding depreciation to a degree, it's ability to borrow out, just extending like circumstance. That's Correct. good to hear, thank you. Once we get through the hiccup we're facing at the moment. We, we, I think when we started in September, the debt was 46 million, Brett, is that right? And uh, we 46.6, and we got it down to 43.3 already. So um, we were making headway. You know, we were determined. We wanted to, you know, deal with the debt that uh, the council had made available to us, 
and we were progressing. Well done. Councillor Cooper. Thank you. Um, so two questions. One is, um, Mr Mackay, you said earlier um, that you had a facility to draw down. Did you mean the council grant or a bank facility? Now, the council grant, as far as I'm concerned, is hypothecated to the projects that we told you about. Oh, that's fine. So what, no, what, sorry. So you were talking about another facility, not about Talking that. about the debt facility. Thank you. So my other question is, it's around resolution C with operational part partnering proposal. And you said that you'd agreed with, I guess it's RFA you're talking to, that you would put this off for, because of the CCO review, but I'm, I'm a bit can sort of stumped around that because there's been a nine month hiatus since we made the resolutions where that could have been progressed. It didn't need an agreement. It, it could just have been got up and we could have made, you could have made considerable savings. And so, and then you said, oh, well actually we're best placed to look after our own grounds. So I just wondered how committed you are to that process because there was no reason to stop it for a whole nine months. So. Yeah, I, I'm really a bit confused because I know that you're committed to savings and this hasn't been progressed. Um, we made efforts to get started, but um, you can't make a lot of progress in the first nine months on a proposal, a partnering proposal like this because there are long-term contracts in place and you are obliged to deal with an opportunity to do things differently as and when those contracts fall due. So the only serious uh, and significant contract around partnering that has come up in that nine months. We did participate in with um, RFA. So you're still committed to that process? Oh yes, I said we are. Yes, we are. But um, with the CCO review underway, uh, I chatted with Stephen Town about it and um, we don't know where that's going to land in respect of uh, RFA and other CCOs, I presume. And we might be dealing, you know, with different people in a different construct very shortly. So he thought that it would be best to pause for the moment. Thank you. Councillor Coombe. Thank you, Madam Chair. Kia ora koutou. Nice to see you again, Mr Mackay. Um, in, t in terms of my questions, I do just want to acknowledge that the crisis and the unprecedented times and that everything is up in the air at the moment. So in that context, though, but I just have two questions. One is um, you've had representatives participating in the annual budget consultation, and I just wondered what was Eden Park looking to get out of that process and hoping to get out of the annual budget? And the other um, question was around... Um, you mentioned that you know the, if we go into a very quiet period, we're well, going into a very quiet period. This might be the opportunity to do some capital works. Would they specifically be the capital works that are funded from the council grant, um, with other additional funds? Uh, your second to your second question. Um, yes, we could advance some of those projects. We haven't made decisions to do that yet, and it might be that when we talk to John and others. Um, as you cope with the pressures on you, you might ask us not to progress some of the projects that are currently scheduled over the next two and a half years. Um, but if all I'm saying is we will have a gap in the schedule where we could get some stuff done quite quickly and very um, efficiently versus normal operations. So let's have a chat about that and weigh that up. As to your first question, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understood um, so your annual budget. We're, 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 we're currently in a have your say consultation process around the annual budget. And I know Nick went along to a have your say session, yes. which is to give feedback on the annual budget. And I just wondered if you'd like to share what it is that you were wanting to see in the annual budget um, as Eden Park, because that's obviously, I mean, you know, that process that we're, we're in. Uh, thanks for the question. I attended the Albert Eden, <coughs> excuse me, Albert Eden local board meeting um, just a, as an, obviously an interested observer. We as a board have not made any um, submission or as a trust submission to the council and there's been no decision if we were to do so. Um, our focus is on obviously our existing operations and uh, ensuring our staff can continue to operate in the park. So, so just that was a regional have your say event in terms of what participants would like to see in 
council prioritise? So are you just saying that Eden Park is not looking to formally submit on that process? Or no, doesn't sorry. have anything you want to bring to our attention that we should know about? No, sorry, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that we haven't had a chance to meet to discuss that process. I attended as obviously an observer uh, with a couple of other community representatives. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Councillor Henderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I look forward to a time when around this table we're talking about economic recovery rather than downturns. Um, and I noted uh, the unique window of we, we have where activity can happen without busy things around us. Um, and I also note many saying that co this COVID situation is really a dress rehearsal for future climate change impacts and climate change emergencies that we have. Um, so to that end, I'd like to ask you uh, what steps have been taken uh, at the stadium for more sustainable operations? And are you planning to talk more about this through this uh, period? From an, from an environmental uh, climate change perspective. Thank you for the question. Can, perhaps we could flick back to the slide that uh, was featured in today's deck. It's on, uh, backwards, yeah. Keep going. Thank you. No, that one there. Um, so I'm, I'm very proud of the work that uh, our staff are doing in this space. Um, we have a, a membership manager that's been 30 years in the business that now um, is an agile organisation. Um, Leanne is now our membership manager and sustainability manager. And uh, if you were to attend the venue on a Sunday or Saturday morning, you'd see Leanne going through waste, sort, sorting waste, um, with a commitment to ensure that uh, we minimise any of our waste going to landfill. So there's been a number of initiatives at the park in terms of uh, sustainability. Um, we've, uh, we're moving towards eliminating single-use plastic at the facility. Uh, we've moved towards aluminium cans as the advice received is that that is a better approach in our retail outlets. Um, we have compostable packaging throughout the venue and um, uh, that is just scratching the surface in terms of what we're doing. We work with the community. People can bring their waste down to Eden Park. There's a community composting area uh, where that is then... Um, the compost occurs and then it's collected by uh, residents in the community or then uh, utilised by our refugee garden. Um, our tourism initiatives, including our rooftop tour and zip line, um, we had commentary recently that it might be the first carbon neutral. Um, and uh, I think for a team that uh, is, is quite lean, um, it's been huge steps made uh, in the supply chain at the park. Right, thank you. Mr Bishop, are you here? Oh, oh sorry, yeah, we're just going to get him, he's back. You, you, they're not going. We're just getting it. Well, we're just getting John to answer Darby's question, then we'll... Uh, OK. Thanks, John. Great. Through you, Chair. So, look, just to confirm, um, the, the loan was signed at the end of September, uh, and I think the grant was only signed uh, in December. Um, and given the timing of Eden Park's uh, annual accounts, um, this seemed the first practical occasion to have Eden Park along to talk about uh, their results. See, thank you. So, so you're confident that this works within our resolution? Uh, yes. Right, thank you. Um, Councillor Bartley. Just a point oh, on that, because that's a response to yes. my question. I invite members to look at the resolution and just ask themselves really whether that satisfies the resolution. Because even if that was the case... And it is. Uh, well, that might be the case about the loan and the grant, but the resolution doesn't say that. The resolution says there's an expectation of invitation, and I'm sure Eden Park would have accepted that invitation to come in here and discuss performance and financial projections. Doesn't talk about the loan, doesn't talk about the grant. It's a, it's a resolution that stands alone. And I have to say, there's been no, I've asked this question and I've copied you to the emails, Chair. There's been no um, email to all of the members of this committee explaining why that resolution was not satisfied. And that's not okay. Right, point taken, thank you. 
Councillor Bartley. Um, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, um, Eden Park Trust Board and Nick, for your uh, for being here today. I, I just wanted to um, make a comment, actually. Um, I appreciated the opportunity to come out to Eden Park uh, some months ago and uh, see what you guys are up to. Didn't really get into the sport that was playing. It was either league or rugby, one of those two yeah. things. Um, but what I did see was uh, the efforts that you're putting in, Nick, to make some money, which I, I uh, acknowledge. I also acknowledge uh, you guys being a living wage employer, and that's one of the first things you did when you started there. And also that your activities aren't just about the Eden Park community, you go wider than that to the rest of the community, the rest of Auckland. And uh, I, just wanna, I just wanna acknowledge that here in front of the councillors and your uh, trust board, so thank you. Thank you, councillor. Can I just make a comment on that? We do employ up to 3,000 people on an event day. And so, as you can imagine, um, the security guards that generally get a 30-hour week um, in our function business, that is a, every revenue stream of ours has been affected. But the downstream effect is that there is are going to be a lot of people who have had uh, working opportunities at Eden Park affected by this. And um, I appreciate that acknowledgement and we are doing everything we can to support those employees through this challenging time. Thank you. Member Taipuri. Oh, kia ora, Madam Chair. Kanui to me, kia koutou e wa. So I just wanted to say, because uh, on, I remember the days quite vividly about whether we would support Eden Park further and stabilise and, and grow for the future uh, and took some pretty strong pressure that day, I uh, don't mind saying. Uh, so it's good to see the report that you're providing about the progress you have made. And it's unfortunate, like it is across the board, uh, across the world, uh, about where we all are at the moment. Uh, so, you know, again, I've just uh, had a few months, most of it's been in isolation, uh, been in China, been here, uh, and what I've watched is the need to collaborate in order to uh, give us all our state of mind back about some normality and who we are. So, you know, to me, events, stadiums, uh, the things that we which, you know, as New Zealanders, uh, we cherish uh, on a weekly basis in our lives, and we'll, we'll see that shortly as everything stops uh, and we haven't got it anymore uh, for some time. Uh, but I think uh, what's most important for all of us is the need to continue to collaborate and support each other and how we can get back to where we were and, and stronger. So I'll continue to do that, uh, and I appreciate the report today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Walker? I, I just want to pick up the, um, the matter you've raised about um, making some improvements at um, Eden Park. And I take on board your, um, your comment about spending um, money. Uh, but quite obviously, if we're interested in a fast recovery and a real good bounce back and the sorts of comments that Mr Taipuri is making around uh, collaboration, I would hope that in terms of your engagement with us that you consider that and also quite obviously issues that go to employment and, and so on because I'm mindful that the larger context on the part of government is its spending uh, so that people are kept in employment and we have bounce back. So I'd, I'd invite a comment around that. And the other question I've got is, is just to Mr Bishop and it goes to... Um, this um, this matter of the report back because the words say um, invite. Did we actually send an invitation to uh, Eden Park? Um, and if so, when? <laughs> and that's on the um, report back on a six monthly basis because there are two parties to that, and obviously one party is is council and our expectation. Um. It doesn't need to be said, but I'll just restate it. We will come and talk to you at any time you want to hear from us or you want an update on what's happening at the park. So that is a given. We are, as Mr Taipuri said, uh, in partnership and collaboration with the council. You are our most important partner, and we will turn up any time you want us to be here, beyond just the reporting deadlines or timeframes in the um, resolution, if necessary. Um, whether we do advance some of the works that um, sit there at the park and uh, parts of the facility that need sort of repair or remediation is something I would only do in collaboration with in full visibility of the council. Um, 
we would um, need to tap, I, I suspect we would need to tap into some of the debt facility that sits there unutilised at the moment to do that. Uh, I would not, without your authority, take the operating grant of 9.8 million over three years and use that for things that we had not come here and asked for that support for. So I'd have to come back and present that. So it's work in progress. Um, and can we capture this opportunity and take advantage of it to that effect? I don't know yet. But thank you. Thank you. Could, I, could I just say to Councillor Bartley, um, thank you for your comments and um, what a privilege it was to host you at the park. We find that um, there are a lot of preconceptions about the park out there and when people come and are willing to give us the time to show the park and its operations, meet its people, we find those perceptions get adjusted and reflect more of the reality that we are as an organisation and what we're trying to do in the future. So thank you for giving us your time and allowing us the privilege of showing you around the park. Thank you. Uh, councillors, I'm just conscious that we have a time frame for the extraordinary item because staff are actually having meetings on the other buildings. So just get the question to a brief, if we can, please. Councillor Mulholland. Kia ora. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I acknowledge your comment um, and following up from others. I'd like to ask a question as well. Um, I'd like to um, thank the Trust Board for your attendance. I acknowledge the current climate that we are all faced with in this community in Tamaki Makaurau and Aotearoa. I too visited um, Eden Park and I want to acknowledge uh, Nick and the staff that took the opportunity to share with me as a new councillor your role and the actions that you are taking um, to work alongside community. And I was most impressed um, by the work and the presentation that you provided to me. It helped me to understand the position that you are in and your relationship with the governing body and therefore Tamaki Makoto um, people. So thank you for that. I also received a copy of your annual report. Um, my question to you is, it's about how you communicate moving forward with the community, your many followers and people who are huge fans of sport, um, and I also acknowledge the IMSB and their um, commentary on this matter. Will you be able to communicate with us, or myself, um, as to the actions you're taking and what you're sharing with community to help them understand what you will be doing moving forward in the next few months in relation, because there's a lot of talk about sport on TV if people do watch that. And by the way, I'm not a rugby player, neither am I playing cricket, but um, you know, how will you be communicating that? Because you will be in a position to alleviate some fear that we're seeing. Um, so I'm just wondering, would you like to send that to us in email or how will you be providing and keeping the fear at bay? Uh, thank you and uh, appreciate you visiting the park. Um, it's probably something I neglected earlier is um, to mention our partnership with Wellington Phoenix and also Rugby League, that um, Eden Park is a stadium for all of Auckland and New Zealand, not just cricket and rugby. And the work that we've done with Wellington Phoenix, um, they remain undefeated and um, how great it would have been to have a final of Wellington Phoenix in Auckland if they hadn't made that. Um, but there are a number of other hirers now utilising the park. Uh, we have done an extensive amount of work with football around the FIFA Women's World Cup for 2023. And uh, let's hope in June, uh, New Zealand and Australia uh, become the host for that very, very exciting event for, for women's sport. Um, in relation to um, the community, yesterday we launched a number of initiatives on our Facebook and Instagram site. Um, that inevitably people are going to be spending more time at home. Um, we have Eden Park Lego sets, we have Eden Park Backyard Cricket sets. We made 100 available to the community and they were snapped up. Uh, we're working with people like uh, Dave Latelli and Butterbean around doing online exercise programs for people. Uh, we're looking at doing um, music events from the park streamed live. We know that people are going to be spending time with their families, but they'll also be looking to get their sports fix. So what are those items that we can do with our hirers, with our broadcast partners, to actually have a, a level of normality during this challenging time? Right, thank you. Councillor Filipina. Uh, thank you, Chair, and it's appropriate that I ask that question based on what Nick just said around exercise. 
Um, so look, um, kia ora mai tātou ngā mihi kia koutou katoa. Look, um, the loan's been mentioned, as in the grant. I'm not going to traverse that because it is what it is, it's happened. But however, on that particular day last year, I asked a, a question, uh, Nick, of you in regards to working together with RFA from an operational perspective, and especially for all our stadia, so we all connected. Um, and there was an undertaking from yourself in regards to, yep, let's, let's join up or let's, let's see what we can do so then we're not competing with each other. So in light of that, can you give us an update as to where that piece of work is? Thank you for the question. Um, Eden Park has submitted uh, 10 areas um, that we believe there's um, opportunities for efficiencies. Um, and that was submitted last year um, through the chair of the um, Combined Operational Efficiencies Program, um, Jim Doyle. Um, and just reiterate Doug's comments that um, the advice received uh, was uh, for that work to be paused until such time as the CCI review uh, was completed. So we're certainly open for that discussion. And, and as I say, um, I've got a document outlining those operational efficiencies that is possible between uh, the parties. Just for you, I just reserve my right to speak on the item. OK, Councillor Darby. Thanks, Chair. And just at the outset, I just want to make clear to the Trust Board, my criticism of the, the no, so-called no-show six months ago is not of you, it's of our organisation, because the invitation needed to be conveyed um, and the resolution needed to be followed up by us. It wasn't for you, to be clear. Uh, just going at the financials, so the, I, I do need to look at that. And so the income is down 1.2, and I'm, I'll just run through some things and maybe you can respond. Um, the in, overall income on the 19 annual report is down 1.2 million on the previous. Uh, sport event income is down 660k. Membership income is down a whopping 1.3. Wouldn't mind an update uh, as of, say, you know, January, February on that, uh, of this year, I mean. Functions income is up. 300,000, that was good. Um, and maybe you could just tell us uh, where you found that. Was that the Mandala exhibition? Um, what were the numbers like there? Uh, gaming of 500,000 you receive, ga ga gaming revenues or gaming income. Can you just tell us what that is used for? And although you say, Doug, you, you don't pay much attention to depreciation, I did notice the depreciation. 17, it was down, went up. 18, down in 19 by a million dollars, and then projected to stay the same in 20. So there's a real inconsistency in the uh, addressing of depreciation, which I noticed, if we could have a look at that. And I understand the projections going forward are near impossible, uh, given the state of, of the globe. That was the first question this, on, on that. And I'll just run through my second and third areas. Um, how much funding did Eden Park receive from AT for the now abandoned double header uh, this week? Uh, I think it's this weekend, now abandoned. And is zero. There, zero. Zero. There was no AT arrangement. Have you received, have you been negotiating with AT any other um, Funding? We talk to AT about all of our events. They come and talk to us about events they'd like to bring to Auckland where Eden Park might be the right venue. So it's a case by case arrangement. There's no long there's no agreed overall budget allocation between us or anything. It's case by case and can we both make sense of it financially? Okay, so there was no agreement for the double header no, between AT. Does. They must have been talking about something else. And just the last one on the concert uh, application. Um, is the Tamatatini concert subject to the receiving of, of that consent? And the last part to that question is, what expenditure to date and projected do you anticipate uh, to um, go through the application and hearings process, expert evidence, etc., for the resource consent? Um, I hope you've got all of that, but it was a rush through. The, um, the resource consent for the concerts, um, we're about two-thirds of the way through the cost of that. 
now. You spend all the upfront money getting the um, reports done by the various um, traffic and noise and everything else. Um, and from memory, that's about $600,000 we've spent. It's not out of any of the council money. It's funding that we create through our own profit and loss. And uh, we have probably on balance, depending on whether we go through independent commissioners, whether we go straight referral to the environment court, um, there might be another three, four hundred thousand dollars there. So that's still sitting there. Um, we do intend to continue on with this process. Um, as you know, we have a discretionary right to have up to six concerts. And we've come to the conclusion after three applications for a single concert that that's a Clayton's. Point of order, Madam Chair. I think it's inappropriate to be discussing this at this time while it's going through due process. Yeah, I'll accept that. Actually, just leave that, Doug, please. Okay, Thank fine. you. All right. Well, we're not discussing the resource consent application. We're just discussing the management of the resource consent application, I thought. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, we are continuing on with that, and we see it even more important now, given the situation we find ourselves in for a fast recovery. Is that subject to the resource? No, it's not. Good. No, it, it can operate uh, within the existing um, rules and regulations around the park. We're very excited about Te Matatini. Um, it's the world's biggest um, Polynesian festival, Māori festival, and um, they are very excited to bring their kids and to um, the iconic Eden Park. They can say they've been on the turf at Eden Park, so we're very excited about that. Councillor Watson. I haven't had the... I asked a series of financial questions. Financial questions, questions I'll we're here ask for, for Brett to respond to those. So regarding the... Um, <coughs> the 2019 financials, uh, a range of um, particular um, conditions existed last year. It was a Rugby World Cup year, so we held just one test match. Test matches are one of the major contributors to our um, annual revenues. So uh, that the consequence of that was a loss of um, venue hire fees, but it also has a flow on effect throughout our um, a, a number of other revenue streams. So, for example, memberships, uh, we uh, charge less for membership in a year when, there, when there's less content. There were only two cricket games last year. In the previous year, there were three. Uh, so that has an impact. Um, the margins upon, that we will earn within those um, events um, vary. So uh, there, are, there are a range of conditions that, that take effect um, in that financial year. So we were down largely because of content. So we knew we were down and uh, we budgeted accordingly. And as I mentioned, I think we achieved um, an operating profit in excess of a million dollars greater than uh, the budgeted results. So at the beginning of the year, we've got a fairly good um, idea of what the event calendar looks like. We've got very good prior information around what the returns will be. We can plan fairly accurately around what our sweet incomes are, around our sponsorship income. So we're actually a fairly easy business to plan and forecast for when things are running as per the program. Uh, so yes, we, we actually overachieved last year given the particular circumstances that we were under. You mentioned the variation in depreciation. The only reason for that was uh, we um, booked an impairment allowance for um, against certain fixed assets. Um, I know it's been a subject of discussion today, but depreciation is driven by estimates of the useful, reasonable life of an asset. So the asset is amortised over time. It's been paid for, so it doesn't cost you any money to depreciate, but you have to book the entry. So where we, we have a, an obligation under accounting rules to evaluate the... Uh, reasonable life of assets, their useful lives, and uh, so we made a one-off um, adjustment which had about a million dollar effect. But the underlying depreciation, as Doug has described, is, is very similar. It will only vary on the basis of extra capital expenditure, which results in future depreciation, or assets that have been fully amortised, which you no longer depreciate. So it's a, it's a very... Um, mechanical exercise. Right, thank you. I'll move the resolution on the screen to thank 
uh, the representatives from Eden Park, noting that you're, you will always be willing to come and talk to us at any time. Thank you very much. And we, I've just added a little extra, of course, based on the fact that there is some un uncertainty or rather uh, around a future pro projection. So thank you for that. I've got a seconder, Councillor Walker. Um, all those in favour say aye. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. Comment. Drop. You were first. Yes, you know. I was just going to very qu quickly um, comment and, uh, and basically just to say to uh, thank the Trust Board uh, for today and, and to say that, you know, the financials have been reassuring as, as they need to be because we have been consistently told by our staff and our CCOs how important Eden Park is to is to Auckland. We were told this time um, last year um, how the ongoing park operations is in Auckland Council's commercial and regional interests. So our officers told that. Regional Facilities Auckland told us that we see the financial and operational sustainability of Eden Park as an essential element and ATED said much the same thing in respect of how important it is to have a venue such as Eden Park to, to hold world-class large capacity stadium events. Of course, we know they, they, they hold a lot more than large-scale uh, stadium events. We have all this veritable plethora of local events and regional events as well. So uh, the financials that I, um, that I read about back in January, but that you have reinforced here today, um, certainly give me an element of uh, confidence that our grant, our help, is, is being well utilised and, and that our region um, is benefiting accordingly. Um, I, I certainly appreciated uh, the reference to the fulfilment of resolutions. That's, that's very uh, comforting to see and, and perhaps that could be rolled out to uh, the, the whole raft of marina resolutions that go unfulfilled 13 months on, but um, certainly in terms of the resolutions that were up in front of us uh, as a consequence of today's meeting um, have been well fulfilled. I'm glad that you're looking at ways that we can uh, function in these uncertain times um, because I think that's, again, it's going to be in our, our Auckland region's interest. So really, Madam Chair, just a, a, a comment to, to actually uh, commend our officers for the way that this um, cooperation is proceeding and to the Eden Park Trust for the results that are being delivered on the ground. I think that's uh, uh, a really good story uh, going forward, and, and I'm sure we'll navigate these difficult times ahead together. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Newman. Just a brief comment to Mr Bishop, and I wanted to thank um, you, Mr Bishop, as well as Lee Redshaw and the team for the very good work that you are uh, undertaking. Thank you for your work with the Eden Park Trust Board, the senior management and the board. Uh, with respect to the timing, um, I received the annual report in the post and I read that and I, I answered my mail uh, when that report came through. Uh, with respect to the timing, there was the election in the middle, um, but I think this, I, I agree with the officer's comment and today has been a well-timed occasion for this discussion, so I want to thank you. Um, and I think that uh, this process reflects well upon you. Thank, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Walker. Just some quick comments, uh, Madam Chair. And um, I'm looking to the future and the opportunity to bounce back. And I would suggest that in that circumstance, Eden Park has a place to play in Auckland, a very strong place, certainly in New Zealand, in terms of our national stadium, across Australasia, because we may well be in a far better position than Australia, and also globally. So this is a global pandemic. The world is looking at Auckland, and one of the important parts of Auckland and New Zealand is Eden Park. So this is really important to our brand and Auckland going forward. The other comment that I would make, Madam Chair, and I understand the scrutiny of Eden Park, but we know on the basis of what we have been told that by far and away the best investment for Auckland is Eden Park compared to anywhere else. And I would hope that if we're looking at issues around capital and operational expenditure, that we benchmark Eden Park across other stadiums in Auckland, New Zealand and conceivably elsewhere. And my best guess is that it's right up there at the top globally. So that's, that's my personal view. 
I'm encouraged at the work that you're putting in to get a level playing field in terms of more content and the quicker that can happen from my perspective, the better. And I think that the stance that the officers have taken relative to the CCO review and delaying is an entirely prudent one because we don't want to spend more money when there may be a changed circumstance that will be all the... Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Darby. Thanks. Thank the Trust. Um, I know this is difficult. It's, uh, it's going to be, for all of us going forward, a challenge. But with uh, an enormous challenge, there's an opportunity and to, to you know, reset your future. Uh, so I wish, I wish you well, and genuinely so. And look, I probably read the report, uh, you know, your annual report. Um, I know some are, sure, are assured by the report, but I, and I know this is now upset by COVID-19, but, um, you know, I did note, um, you know, declines in income and sport event membership functions, depreciation. I noted the auditor's comment, the tag on depreciation, right down deep in the report, small lines, but he, he she noted that there's not currently, um, the organisation's not currently generating sufficient surpluses to, to cover depreciation. So there's that part. But going forward, um, Chair, I think we have a responsibility to write a report to support this governance group that poses some questions uh, about what our finance team see in the annual report because we're, we haven't had anything like that. So I think we have failed, our organisation has failed, and if there's any criticism here today, I have to make it of us, that um, there should be a report um, from our team outlining any flags. This is a all up. We assumed a $40 million loan and made a $9.8 million grant. This is serious money, and the people of Auckland expect better governance oversight than what I am saying we have had to date. It is not Eden Park's responsibility, it is our responsibility. $50 million. So the next six monthly, I really urge the staff and the finance team to write a report that actually interrogates uh, the financials, uh, performance, and the projections. We haven't, we haven't got that to seed our governance engagement right here today. Thank you, Councillor. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a moved and seconded the recommendations. I'll put it to the vote. All those in favour say aye. aye. Against, carried. Thank you.